Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how substances are absorbed by active transport. You should then be able to describe examples of active transport in animals and plants. We've already seen how substances move by diffusion. Remember that diffusion is the net movement of particles from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. And the word net just means overall. I'm showing you here a cell membrane with a high concentration of particles on one side and a low concentration on the other side. As we saw, scientists call this a concentration gradient. Because we have a region with a high concentration and a region with a low concentration, there'll be a net movement of particles by diffusion down the concentration gradient. And I'm showing you that here. Now, there's a problem here. What if a cell needs to bring in a molecule, which is already at a high concentration inside the cell? I'm showing you that in this example. Here, there's a higher concentration of the molecule inside the cell than outside. This means that these molecules cannot diffuse into the cell. In fact, they could diffuse out. So how can the cell bring these molecules in? To do this, the cell uses a process called active transport. Active transport moves substances from a more dilute solution to a more concentrated solution. In other words, against the concentration gradient. This requires energy from respiration. Now you'll notice that active transport is different from diffusion in two key ways. Firstly, in diffusion, particles move down the concentration gradient, whereas in active transport, particles are moved against the concentration gradient. Secondly, diffusion does not require energy from respiration, whereas active transport does. We often see active transport in biology, and you need to know two examples. This shows the cells lining the human small intestine. We're going to see these cells again in a later video. The cavity of the small intestine where food's digested is called the lumen, and we can see that here. In the lumen, we find the molecules produced when food's digested, and a good example of this are sugars such as glucose. You can see that the concentration of sugars in the lumen is lower than the concentration of sugars inside the cell. So these sugars cannot diffuse into the cell. Instead, the sugars are carried in by active transport like this. Once they're inside the cell, the sugars can then be transported into the blood and carried around the body. Now you'll notice that these cells have got lots of mitochondria. These carry out respiration, providing the energy needed for active transport. Let's take a look at an example of active transport in plants. This shows a root hair cell found in the roots of plants. We saw these cells in an earlier video. Root hair cells transport ions such as magnesium into the plant from the soil. Plants need magnesium to make chlorophyll in the leaves. The concentration of ions in the soil is lower than the concentration inside the root hair cell. So active transports used to move the ions into the cell like this. These ions are then transported into the xylem vessels and moved to the leaf. Again, we can see that root hair cells have got lots of mitochondria to provide the energy for active transport. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on active transport in my vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to describe how substances are absorbed by active transport. You should then be able to describe examples of active transport in animals and plants. Yeah.